I know I'm late with this one being that we're almost two weeks into January. My birthday done passed on the 10th. And I was planning on doing this on the first week of January, but you know, things happen. But without further ado, these are my top five games of 2023. Lies of P. Lies of P is a Souls like made by NeoWiz. The game itself, when it came out with the demo, I think it was rough around the edges, but when you, when they did the official release, the game play was spectacular. From the first boss fight all the way to chapter nine, I highly recommend the game. However, after chapter nine is probably where I have my gripes with the game. Primarily when they redo the uh, Black Black Rabbit Brotherhood boss fight. I think, it, no, I, I can't remember the name of it, but the Brotherhood boss fight where you fight against all three of the siblings and then the brother comes out when you're on the last sibling. Like from there onward, like I, I won't lie, I wasn't having the greatest time as it felt as though the game started to lose a bit of its identity. Now that we got some of my gripes out the way with the game, the game is phenomenal in itself from the parry mechanic, the dodge uh, mechanic, to the wep weapon customization, P organs, I believe is what, it, what it's called, which are pretty much talents that gives you different abilities to stack on top of the basic set or the basic uh, mechanical set that the player has. Elemental attacks that pretty much has a rock paper scissors scheme depending on the type of enemy that you're going against as well as electricity being incredibly damaging to you along with break uh probably depending on your gears uh, uh resistances although it seemed like no matter what electricity was just incredibly strong against me for the most part the game systems just their underlying uh feature and mechanical systems were great Final Fantasy 16, and it's primarily because of the combat system and the narrative. I really enjoyed the story of the game, as a lot of you probably seen during the live streams, figuring out what was going on, the complexities of Clive as a character, as well as his his hero's journey, so to speak, which I, I thought was pretty great. It's the best I've seen in a Final Fantasy game. Combat system in the game was very Devil May Cry-esque. I want to say it, it borderline Devil Bay Cry 3 with me. It was great from the different ways that you could switch between the primals, you could pull them to you, big massive AOEs to everything else, the stagger system in the game, then the boss fight designs and fights themselves, the music of the game was just fantastic. The game all around was just amazing in my opinion. Blasphemous 2. From the level design, boss fights, the mechanical makeup of the different player progression power-ups, in particular the three weapons, how they use those as pretty much a way for you to, to choose where you want to go first within the game, what ability you would have associated to your, uh, your weapon, be it the, I believe it's the ground pound from the sword, the dualies basically was like an electrical dash and or they could turn on certain switches the hammer or mace thing you were basically able to like ring bells which would open up like certain doors or certain pathways that was pretty dope on top of the different player progressions you would get such as you know a double jump the dash things like that the game itself was was really really good from the boss fights the boss designs, enemy designs, environmental designs, everything was incredible. The, the, the audio, the sound effects, and the music of the game was just, was just mwah. Hi-Fi Rush. At the beginning of the year, this game came out of nowhere, but that's the just showcased it and then just said, here you go. I swear to all goodness. This game was refreshing as I don't know what. A Saturday morning cartoon as a rhythmic based beat em up. Fam, we haven't had anything that creative in a minute. <laughs> that was like, it, it was so much fun. I, I still think at this current point in time, they should make this into a Saturday morning cartoon, although they may never. 
but at the same time it, it was it was that good the narrative of the game was 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 pretty simple you know family family ties is just all i'm gonna say in case you haven't beaten it the gameplay from from the rhythmic attacks that you would do in order for you to land on beat and then landing on beat that would do more damage to the enemy which would then encourage you to try to pull off some insane wacky crazy combos to the parry system to the block system the dodge system to the boss fights and how incredibly unique they were from each one which which took me back to the old playstation one days in case anybody remember like parappa the rap or get the do man or well get the do man was playstation 2 but it was like that but in beat em up fashion fam that game was just great and i know when i was playing it like i had some gripes but i don't remember them that well now all i remember is the good about the game which is why it's at number two system shock 2023 my only gripe about the game is the end boss fight but outside of that i haven't played a game like this that didn't treat me like i was a idiot that didn't make me feel stupid that didn't try to explain everything to me at every single turn in a minute this game drops you into this world and it say figure it out that's it go figure it out oh you need to know this puzzle you should have been paying attention buddy <laughs> you got to figure it out go read those journal logs go try to piece together the narrative go try to figure out what this person was doing on this particular section of the station go figure out why old girl is basically trying to destroy all humans like figure this all out and once you figure it out cool and then with the with the way that it messes with you psychologically like especially if you if you don't go through the proper step there's a point in the game where if you don't go through the proper steps and you just hit the button to activate the laser it will <laughs> it will destroy earth <laughs> and it was like the most craziest thing and it will trigger a game over screen so it was like the craziest thing ever when that had happened and she was like oh thank you for doing my job for me goodbye and then she sends like one of the little uh, 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 quadrupeds to you that just like pretty much put you in like one of the machines. And that Jay was just crazy, man. On top of all of that, the gunplay was great. The different weapon types that you would get was amazing. The different enemy types was ah. Uh. Originally, the game felt like a horror game and then it completely switched up into like this sci-fi crazy adventure. Like, I'm just sad, man. Like, if you, if you haven't played this game, I would highly recommend it. I will say you are going to get upset with how the, the way the game ends because, and it's just because of the quality of the game up to that point, because you're not, you're going to think to yourself, well, it shouldn't be this easy for me to beat the game at the end. Not after I just like got beat up by this spider human. Like not after I just fought this big old tourist demon that was like hunting me down. Not after I, I just went and beat this giant cyborg or I had to fight against these goddamn going mutant mechs. Like you're just going to think to yourself, yo, like what is this? But overall, the game itself is fantastic. Uh, the neural mods that you put into your system operate. The game itself it's like it's really like an experimentation of figure it out and the best way to figure it out is to try not trial and error like le legitimately just try try you, you you never know unless you try and i think that is like the perfect encapsulation of what gaming is